You know, you always hear people talk about, you know, follow your passion. Gold fever, they called it. The search for gold in North Carolina's creeks and underground mines. And what I didn't really understand was that people can change passion. Hanukkah Tales from Oikvetschnik by Scott Hilton Davis. I'm Brenda, and welcome to Act Two Stories, where we hope to inspire you to reinvent yourself, especially if you're 50 plus. Don't forget to subscribe, the red button, bottom right, under this video. Thank you so much. Now, for decades, Scott Davis was a documentary filmmaker for public television, and he was an award winner. During his 22 plus years at UNC TV, he and I worked on some amazing projects like North Carolina's World War II experience and Gold Fever and the Beckler Mint. Turns out his new passion would take him all the way from California to New York to Poland, back to North Carolina. I've often said I'm not sure if I discovered Jacob Dinazan or if he discovered me. Reviving the most famous Yiddish writer you never heard of. Yiddish was uh, what they call the mamaloshin, the mother tongue. It was the language of the home and of the marketplace and of the poor and less educated people. And there was this explosion of Jewish creativity in the late 19th and early 20th centuries written in Yiddish that included stories and novels. When he retired in 2013, Scott had already started Jewish Storyteller Press to publish some of those stories. I was doing research on the two writers that have really received most of the attention, Tael Peretz and Sholem Aleichem. I was working on a little book of retold tales. As I started reading, I kept finding this other name showing up in relationship to those two writers. The writer's name is Jacob Dinazan. When I went looking for stories by him, I couldn't find any because none of his works had ever been translated into English. He found a copy of a Dinazan book in Yiddish and hired a translator so he could read it. But he was hooked and wanted to know more. We're producers, right? You know, that, that, that public television curiosity to find answers. Turns out Jacob Denison was quite a successful writer in his day. His Der Schwarzer Jungermannschick, The Dark Young Man, is considered the first best-selling novel in Yiddish. Why was this book so popular? First, it was a love story. Joseph gave her a long Passionate kiss. Isn't that great? <laughs> I'm sorry, even if you're not a romantic, it's a great scene, right? He had an ability to bring an emotional aspect to his writings. But in spite of his success, there was a big problem. The Hebrew press, they completely ignored the dark young man because it was written in Yiddish. And Yiddish was frowned on by the intellectuals. As I started thinking, wow, you know, this guy deserves to come into the 21st century. Scott's Jewish Storyteller Press has brought Jacob Denison back to life in English. Three novels, a collection of short stories, and a biography. He said it's been a rewarding 16-year journey. He was so instrumental in the development of modern Jewish literature at the turn of the 20th century. But there's more. Scott also says Dinizan presents a different picture of Jewish life at that time that is historically significant. And he really lays out what life was like for our gra my grandparents and for many people's great-grandparents now. So it's a very um, realistic look at Jewish life at that time. It's a harsh look at times. It's, it's, it will elicit tears in readers. The, 
endings aren't always happy. Uh, there's no singing and dancing like Fiddler on the Roof. This is the real stuff. And finally, a more personal contribution of Jacob Denison, one with particular meaning to Scott. And as I learned more and more about Jacob Dinazan, about his kindness, about his mentoring, about his deep, deep love of the Jewish people and of uh, his friends, I started to see my father in Jacob Dinazan. I started to see these qualities my father had. And my father was a mensch. My father was a man of great integrity. He was very loving to his family, and he was an incredibly good father. In his life and in his writings, Jacob Dinazan was the embodiment of a mensch, a role model during his lifetime, and a role model for us today. You know, he was a very modest man, and he might be saying, why did you take this on? I didn't ask for this. But I'm hoping that if we ever meet in the heavenly court, he'll say, good job, good job. Scott says the reward for him is seeing Jacob Denison books on bookshelves these days. There is even a Wikipedia site in the works. As for Scott, though, he says his journey is complete, that he's going to take a break, and he's confident that a new creative journey will appear. Now here's the website for Jewish Storyteller Press where you can order any of these books. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.